about heat transfer and thermal energy. So no, I haven't turned into an alien. You're just looking at some super cool technology that records my thermal image instead of my visible image. So I know it's kind of spooky, but it's gonna allow us to look at thermal science in a whole new way. Okay, so the first question is, oh! Why is that inner tube so hot on my legs? Any guesses how hot it might be? No wonder. The tube is 45 degrees Celsius. The black surface absorbed the radiant heat from the sun. The heat was transferred by radiation from the electromagnetic waves of the sun to the tube. See, no direct contact of matter. This transfer of thermal energy is called heat. Then when I sat on it, the tube transferred the heat to my legs. Ouch, heat always flows from a hotter object, the inner tube, to a cooler object, my butt, oh, my body. That's conductive transfer, the moving particles in the tube colliding with the particles in my skin, causing them to move. So heat flows between objects of different temperature until the two objects reach the same temperature. So technically, if I sat here long enough, the tube in my body would reach the same temperature. So how else can conduction affect heat transfer between objects? <laughs> Why does this water feel so cold? <laughs> it's because where the water touched my legs, it transferred heat away from my body through conduction. Water conducts heat away from my body about 25 times more efficiently than the air. That's why I feel so much colder in the water than I did when I was up on the beach. I am not going in there. I'm gonna get hypothermia. You know, when a person's body temperature drops dangerously below normal? I'm not risking that. So how can we prevent this conduction? Come on. Now, unlike water, all the tiny nitrogen bubbles inside the synthetic rubber of this neoprene wetsuit are poor conductors of heat. So the layer of warm water next to my skin, plus the layer of neoprene, will keep me insulated from the cold water of the ocean. Yeah, it's definitely better with a wetsuit. We wear protective clothing here on Earth when we spend time in cold environments to avoid losing too much body heat. And space engineers have designed thermal protection systems for spacecraft to protect them and the astronauts inside from very high temperatures during re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. Like the thermal protection system on NASA's Constellation, this spacecraft features a heat shield made up of layers of materials that are poor heat conductors. This way, the heat shield blocks the transfer of heat buildup on the outside of the spacecraft from getting to the inside and the astronauts. How else can heat be transferred? Well, besides the role that radiation plays in heating objects and the role that conduction plays in the transfer of heat between objects, how else does heat flow? Ah, time for an experiment. Now, I would have avoided getting my backside burned from that tube if I would have first tested for convection transfer. Now, convection is the movement of fluid or air, in this case, air, in transferring heat. Now I've got two cups, one with hot water and one with cold water. If I hold a piece of paper over each cup, you can see the effects of convection transfer of heat. So by looking with our thermal camera, we can see the result of radiation transfer from the sun onto the tube, the conduction transfer from something touching the tube, and finally, the convection transfer from air moving away from the cups. 
So I know you don't have one of these fancy thermal video cameras. So try a few of these simple examples to see if you can figure out just what kind of heat transfer is happening. Put your hands in some really warm water. Hold them over a hot bowl of soup or a mug of tea. Place your hands in front of a fire. So once you get into it, you'll see that the principles of heat transfer affect our lives more than you might have thought. So never stop exploring your world.